Good morning. Hi, friends. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I'll wait for some friends to join in. Uh, I have one viewer coming in now. Everybody started to join. Good morning. Drop a comment. Let me know who's here so I can give you a shout out. It is Tuesday morning. We are moving into a terrific Tuesday. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hi, Hi Killian. Hi, Teresa. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. You're here. Ms. Kavanaugh's drinking her coffee. I love coffee. What are you guys doing right now? I bet you you've been up since super early. I know my little friends love to wake up early in the morning. How many of you have been up for a long time? How many of you just got up? Mm. Good morning. Hello, hello. Good morning, friends. Hi, Miss Silverstein. Hi, Miss Turner. Hi, Abby West. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy you're here with us again. Hi, Madeline. I see that you're here with us. <clears throat> oh, someone just told me they're eating a second breakfast. You've been up so long. Uh, that's impressive. I'm impressed. Hi, Trevor. Trevor, I saw the mail that you sent to your friend. I thought that was such a beautiful idea. I love it. Since we can't meet up with our friends at the park, Trevor wrote a letter and sent it in the mail to his friend and his friend got it and took a picture and sent it. How awesome is that? Super cool, great idea. I love it. We should try that. All right. Miss Jones, shout out to Miss Jones, lots of love. Secretary from our school. Hunter and Grayson are back, Miss Goodzak's nephews. Thank you for joining us. I'm so happy you're all here with us this morning. How is everybody on this terrific Tuesday? I'm happy to be here. I definitely am more relaxed getting back into my groove again for the week. Um, um, this is so awesome that we can all connect. So yesterday, I had um, a Zoom meeting with my kinders, and not everyone was able to join, but a lot did. And um, hi, Logan. That's Miss Kim from our school. Her, Miss Choi, her son Logan's here. Hi. So we had, and Brian. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Ryan Barlow. Hi, Applegates, Lexi, and Liam. So yesterday, I decided to try to have a Zoom meeting with my class, and some of my class was able to join in. We're going to do another one on Wednesday. And um, so our Zoom meeting was very cute. A lot of my kinders had never been on Zoom before, and they were super excited to see each other's faces and say hi. So we're going to try that again on Wednesday. And Ms. Throckmorton can't wait to join us. Our assistant, she misses you guys so much. Uh, looks like Logan's back. Good morning, Logan. So. Um, we're going to do that, I think, Wednesday night at 6.30. So some of the parents that are still working can be home and we can get all of our friends together and see each other's beautiful, happy faces, even if it's just to say hi. Yesterday, Lily showed us her cats. How cool is that? We saw Olivia's dog. It was very cool to be able to see the pets that our friends always talk about through our Zoom meeting. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. I want to make sure I gave everybody a shout out. All right. Um, let's get going. So... Before we start, you know, we like to take our deep breaths. And Ms. Kavanaugh learned over the weekend that I was doing it not exactly right. I was used to exercising breaths, which are in your nose, out your mouth. So I was told the true yoga breaths are in your nose, out your nose, except for that last lion's breath that we take. So do you want to try with me? We're going to take a deep breath in our nose, out our nose, three times. Here we go. Now we're gonna do the lion's breath. That's a really deep breath in your nose and then you let it out your mouth and you get to make a little noise with it. Like all your energy goes out and it relaxes your whole body. Are you ready? Here we go. Ah. 
feels so good, right? I love the way that feels. All right. Oh, shout out to teacher friend, GLC teacher friend, uh, Miss Rock from Gregory School. Miss Rock's here. Hey, Miss Rock. Awesome. So since she's here with us now, I want to tell everybody. So there's this push up challenge going around, and Miss Rock challenged me. So I'm going to record and do my 10 push ups, and I'm going to put it on our Kinder Cabs page, and I want my class to do the same thing. All right, are you guys ready for the 10 push-up challenge? We're joining Miss Rock's challenge, all right? Okay, so, oh, someone's here to say hi. Oh, there's Mr. Daryl. Not doing the challenge. Oh, Mr. Daryl doesn't want to, <laughs> Mr. Daryl, we're trying to stay healthy and yeah. strong. I only, I only do push-ups. I only do push-ups for free socks, ask Greenwood. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Daryl. All right, so hi, friends. All right, those of you who don't know, that's Mr. Daryl. All right, so we're our emotional check-in. We just breathe, we relaxed our whole bodies. I want to know how you are feeling today. How are you feeling? Oh, Lucy from Morris Avenue, thank you for joining us for doing an emotional check-in. Everyone, give me an emoji how you're feeling today. Let me see if I can get to my emojis while we're here so I can put one up too. Oh, I'm gonna do this one. Let's see if it works. There we go. I did my excited face. Can you guys see that? Awesome. All right. So I want to do a little bit something different other than just breathing and checking in for our social emotional learning today. I want to talk about a strategy that we can use to grow, right? So we can grow emotionally and socially. So I thought that today's focus, and not just here while we're together, while you're in your homes with your families, um, being, uh, talking about using our words. Sometimes when we have very strong emotions, we decide to react by maybe yelling or having a fit or maybe shutting down and not talking at all. Sometimes we might cry or stomp our feet but there are other things that we can do. Um, we can step back. We can take a deep breath, up to three deep breaths, and that can help refocus us. And then we want to try to use our words, okay? So say your brother or sister snatches your toy out of your hand. They snatch it right from you. Instead of going, ah, mom! or hitting them, like all those things, you know, those aren't the best choices. You can take a couple deep breaths and say to your brother or sister, Kevin, can I have that back, please? And if they don't do it, you ask them again. Can I have that back, please? And if they still don't say, please give it back, or I'm telling my mom, right? Isn't that a better way to do it? So then you can go, but we're not going to be tattletales because we're going to say it in not that tattletale voice. We're going to say, Mom, I have a problem. I asked nicely. See, I'm using my words. I asked nicely for it back, and Kevin won't give me my toy. Okay, so this is our focus while we're at home. Because I know it's not, it's tough to be in the same spot for a long period of time, stuck in our houses. So we need to make the best of it and use our kind words. Are you ready to practice using your kind words and your your words of asking your parents for help or asking your brother or sister to cooperate without yelling or whining. You know, when they do it in a voice like this. We talk about that all the time in my class, right? We don't like to ask for things in whiny voices. I'll say, say it again, like a big kid. All right, I wanna make sure before we scoot along. Oh, who else we have? Oh, Miss Cornegay, hey! The Gomez clan, hello, hello. Where is JJ? I always get the where is JJ question, eating all the pancakes. Now, JJ is actually on his computer doing his schoolwork. Oh, hi, Lucy. And the Sims, Sharp Sims family here. Hello. How is everybody? Hi, Allie. I hope you're enjoying your time at home. I saw your cool fort that you built. I was a little jealous. I love forts. I miss doing stuff like that with my kids. They're bigger now. All right, good morning, Yago. All right, so now, focus of the week. We're gonna use our words, right? We're gonna use our words. I wanna do um, a little bit of a sound review. So I wanna grab my sound map. 
because we're going to play a silly game, and I think you'll like it. This is my sound map. You may have a sound map that looks different or an ABC, a thing of ABCs. This is all the consonants. There are no vowels on this, okay? So I'm going to use this sound map to play my game. Now, remember my secret decoder? You can make one of these out of paper. I really like the secret decoder because it helps us to focus on one thing that we're looking at. Like, so for example, this is the, what sound? Wuh. Can you say it with me? Wuh. And the picture clue is there. Watch. Yeah, the W. So over here we have D, dinosaur. Yes, letter D. And how about here? Turtle. Good. All right. So I know that most of my class, you're, you know your letter sounds, especially your consonant letter sounds. Um, my friends that are just learning them, that's okay. You can practice. You can use a sound map like this. Maybe you have one at home, or you can write out the letters of the alphabet or ask your mom or dad to play this game. All right. So it's called the name game, and it's really silly and lots of fun. So I'm going to start with my name, and my kids all know. What's my first name? Megan. All right, so I'm going to change the first sound in my name using different letters from the sound map. It's really silly. You ready? So Megan is already the same as monkey, right? So Megan, Negan, Wagon, Peggin, Beggin, Vegan, Fegin, Segin, Zegin, Kegin, Segin, Tegin, Degin, Gegin. Oh my goodness. So fun, right? So you can try with a different name. Hi, Lucas. So I can do it with any word. I mean, how about dog? Dog, wog, nog, sog, tog, rog, log. <laughs> how fun is that? So this is something that you can try with your name. Try it with your name. I think we've done this before, right? Yago, Yago remembers. Yago, Nago, Wago, Pago, Bago. I love it. Maybe you could come up with an awesome list of silly names for your name using the name game. So fun. You could try all day long with different words. So much fun. All right. So before we move on to the next thing, um, I need my secret decoder. Got it. And oh, I forgot something today. I forgot to give you the answer of the riddle before the next activity. Who remembers the riddle? What has to be broken before you can use it? Did anybody figure it out? Did you figure it out? Let me see if we have any answers out there. Uh. I think I might have stumped everyone on this one. I didn't even get any messages about that one. It's something from the kitchen, and a lot of people use it in the morning at breakfast time. It needs to be broken before you use it. An egg. Yep, an egg. How funny is that? So I think my friends are really going to like today's riddle. You ready for today's riddle? What do you call a fairy? that has not had a bath. What do you call a fairy that has not had a bath? So if you, if you need to find this, um, instead of typing it in the comments, I've been adding this stuff, I'm gonna add to the story, to our Facebook page story after we're done, all right? So you're gonna find that, the problem of the day, um, our goal for the week using our words, all on the Facebook story. All right, good. I can't wait to hear if you figured it out. Oh, some people think they know already. Oh, that was a good one. It has to get broken before you use it. That, oh my gosh, someone has an answer that actually works other than egg. Glow stick. A glow stick. You have to break the inside before you can use it. That's so good. Oh, Brian got it. Egg. I'm just scrolling through. Oh, a lot of egg answers. You guys are so smart. Hi, shout out to Miss Adonisio, our retired media specialist. We miss you. We're so happy you're here. All right, so we have been working on nursery rhymes, and yesterday we practiced Hickory Dickory Dock. Do you want to practice again? My turn, your turn, and then I'm going to use my secret decoder. I want to show you something that we're going to do, and we're going to use our notebooks. Are you ready? All right. My turn, then your turn. Hickory Dickory Dock. Hickory Dickory Dock. The mouse ran up the clock. 
the trot. Oop, the clock struck one. And down he run. Hickory dickory dock. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So I like nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes, they have a lot of rhymes in them, but they also help us to learn. If you memorize them, it's really good for your brain to practice and, and say nursery rhymes and sing nursery rhymes. They're really, really good to help grow our brains, okay? So I want to get my secret decoder, handy dandy secret decoder, and my board. I wrote out our nursery rhyme. And I want to show you our word pattern that we're going to focus on for today. So let's see. So over here, does everyone see this? This is a lock. Can you say lock? Lock. You see it has the thing that hooks in and a key. Some of you might have something similar to this, maybe for your bicycle or for a shed. Um, this is a lock. I know in our classroom, we have cool um, sound locks. So we use locks like this all the time um, as a center game. So down here, let's look at the letters O, C, K. And when those letters are together, O, C, K, it says OC. Can you say OC? Yeah, OC. So we know that this blank line means that we can put a sound in here and try to build a new word. But right now, we're just going to use OC. See it in my decoder? We're going to use OC and scan through Hickory Dickory Dock and try to find some more OC words. Are you ready? We're going to scan through and you're going to yell for me when I should stop. I'm going to get my marker ready. Okie dokie. You ready to tell me when to stop? All right. Hickory Dick. You said stop. I know it right here. O C K. Ock. Do you see it? Awesome. All right. So we have hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the. Oh, you said stop, didn't you? Cool. Ock. There we have another ock. Look at that. Two so far. You guys are so smart. All right. Here we go. So we have hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock. Oh, there's another one. Same word. Ock as in clock right here. There's that ock. O C K. Do you see it? Awesome. The clock struck one. Down he run. Hickory dickory dock. Oh, did you, did you say stop? Did I miss one? You're right, doc. Wow, how many did we find? One, two, three, four. Wow, you found the word, word pattern oc four times in this nursery rhyme. Wow, that's really awesome. Let's read it through together one more time. Are you ready? Hickory. Dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. Down he run. Hickory dickory dock. Wow. So we have dock, clock, clock, dock. So two words. It's two words that repeat. Now we are going to do some word building ourselves. So while I put this down, I want you to get either your green notebook, a dry erase board, a piece of paper. Hi, Christian. All right, are you guys ready? Hi, Miss Long. Shout out to Lena Conroe School, kindergarten teacher, Miss Long. Thank you for joining us. So we're gonna do our word building. And I just wanna remind you how we do that. And let's remember that our word, my board's falling, that our word pattern that we're using is oc. Let me show you again, nice and close, oc. So Miss Kavanaugh is going to use her dry erase board and remind you how to set it up. So a line, o c k, and then right underneath the same thing, a line, o c k. A line, O, C, K, 
align O C K. And if you're still working, that is A O K. All right. So the line represents some missing letters or sounds. Um, it could be one, it could be two, sometimes even three, because a blend can work. So let's start by building a word that we know. We know that this is an awk word. What's the picture? Yeah, lock, which you hear at the beginning of lock. Oh, like lion. So let's do a lowercase l. Oh, lock. Ul ok says lock. Very good. Let's try another sound, and you can pick anything off of your sound map and try it out and see if it works. What about turtle? What's the sound for turtle? T -t -t -t. Talk. T -t -t. Let's do it. Down and across. T ok. Talk. Like tick tock. The sound a clock makes. Awesome. So let's read the words that we've made already. Ul, ok, lock, t, ok, talk. Very good. It's really important to reread our words because sometimes we just build it and then we move on and we forget to actually read it. It's important to read it. Now, before I put this aside, I want you at home after we're done this morning, to go back and make as many words as you can with ok. Now, the challenge is using even a new digraph we've been going over, th, sh, or ch, you can see if one of those work, or even maybe a blend where there's two consonants together like burr, soul, full, sw. Let's see if you can do it. Okay, so we are going to take this. Oh, hi, Mr. Kelly. Shout out to JMF. Mr. Kelly, thank you for joining us. Shout out to Avon School's very own Miss O, kindergarten teacher. Hi, friends. All right, so we are going to do word building, and you guys are going to take some pics and send it to me, and I will put it on our story for everyone to see your awesome words. Word building with Ock is in lock. Awesome. All right. Moving and grooving. So we are going to move on to some math skills. So our morning math skills. Yesterday I told you that today we were going to practice subitizing in a different way. And a quick review. You guys are going to all be subitizing pros and you're going to be able to explain it to everyone. So subitizing is when you look at something like this and you know right away that this is two, right? You don't need to touch and count one, two. You look at it and you know this says two. Just like in kindergarten with sight words, when you look at the word the, and you know it says the without sounding it out. So subitize, say subitize. Very good. We've been subitizing using tense frames um, and dots. And we are gonna start to use some other things online with together to subitize. So look at this and you know it's two, the number two, just like my fingers. I hold these up and you know that that is two without touching and counting. If I hold this up, you know that that is five, right? But if you're not used to subitizing and you're not sure how many of this is when I hold it up, you can count them. One, two, three, four, five. That's okay. Just like everything, subitizing takes practice. So the better you practice, the quicker you are. And I always tell you, play board games where you roll dice. That's a great way. And you can also practice with Harry Kindergarten. Harry Kindergarten is awesome, and he has lots of subitizing videos. So you're ready to try some subitizing with me? We'll start easy, and we'll get more challenging. All right, so your job is to shout it out, okay? You don't have to scream and, and wake up your whole family if some people are still resting. But I want you to say it out loud, not in your head, okay? And if you if you say the wrong thing, that is okay. It is okay to not get everything perfect. Sometimes when we're on here, I make mistakes. It's okay, we all do, we're human. So are you ready? Thumbs up, here we go. How many? Three, excellent. How many? One, good. How many? Some of you might have said four. Some of you weren't, you might not have been sure, or you might have seen two and said two, three, four. That's a great strategy counting on if you need to. That's okay. But this, let's stick it in our brains. Ready? Push it in your brains. 
four. How about this one? Three. Three again. Did you say five? Whenever I see this card, it makes me think of four and one more. Four and one more is five. A strategy that happens really quick and can happen really quick in your brain when you practice it. About this one. Four. Ooh, that one looks like the dice. Five. Did you say four? Yeah, look, three and one more, right? Four. How about this one? It's five. That one's five as well. All right, we're going to get trickier. Six. Did you see four and two more? That's a great strategy. Six again, four and two more. And maybe, and I told some of you, maybe you see this and you know it's four and you knew that was four. That's great. But you don't know altogether yet what it is. You can do four and count on five, six. And the more you practice, the better you will get. All right, ready? What's this one? Good. Seven, I see six and, oh, wrong side, and one more. Seven, awesome. Did you say six? Kiss your brains. How about this one? Yeah, seven again. Six and one more. Did you say six? Super smart. All right. That one is six, two. Can I show you the strategy that happened in my brain really fast? And if you practice, it'll get really fast. So I saw those three in a row first, right? Three. And then I saw, oops, three. And I thought three and three. I know what three and three is. Three and three more is six. How about this one? That one is seven. Six again. Seven. How about this one? Six. How about this one? Six. And then we're going to do two more challenge. Are you ready? What did you say? It was eight. Good job. Let's try this one. Did you say eight? Yeah, I saw the five over here first, the black dots, and then you can count on in your brain with the gray. Five, six, seven, eight. Kiss your brain. That was awesome. You guys are like subitizing pros. I'm so proud of you. You are making your math muscles really strong. You're going to have really, really strong mental math. All right, so I want to find my hundreds chart. Here it is. We practice in kindergarten counting, right? We count up to 100 by one. We should be practicing every day counting up to 100 by one. And we practice counting by tens, which we see right here, all right, our tens. And we also have been practicing counting by fives. So I want to practice counting by tens. Can you help me? We'll do it all together first, and then we'll do a my turn, your turn. I like that way. Ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. You did it. Now we're going to do my turn, your turn. So I say 10, you say, good, 20. So let's do it. Ready? 10, 30, 50, 70, 90. Good job. Awesome. Now we're going to switch. You go first. You guys are going to say 10, and I'm going to do the opposite. Ready? Your turn. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Awesome. Kiss your brains. You guys are so smart. All right. So counting by fives is a little trickier. And I like looking at it on the hundreds chart because there's a pattern. So 
Miss Kavanaugh is going to show you again. We do this every day at school. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. So let's slow it down a little bit and let's, let's do it together. Are you ready to do it with me? 5, 10, 15, I want to hear you, 20. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, did you say 100? Awesome job counting up. All right. I want to practice a couple counting ons. Do you remember those from last week? So the green number is the number we start at, all right? We start at green and we stop at nine. Counting on can be tricky. It's okay, it takes practice. So we're gonna start at three and count to nine. Are you ready? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You did it. Let's try this one. We're starting at five and we're stopping at you said it, 11, here we go. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, stop. Awesome. Now I'm gonna move up, we're gonna get trickier. What's my starting, what's my starting number? It's a teen. You got it, 14. And we're gonna stop at number 21, here we go. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Oh, you guys are awesome at counting on. All right, one more. We're moving up to a bigger number for the last one, the challenge one. We are starting at number, what was that number? Did you say 39? So smart. And 45. So we're going to start at 39, stop at 45. Here we go with 39, 40, 41. 42, 43, 44, 45. You did it. Counting on with kinders. You guys are rocking it. So do you remember those tens frames that we made together yesterday? We used a piece of paper and we made a tens frame. And some of you went back and used the video and made a tens frame. I saw some of you had your parents help you draw them. So I took my tens frame and I actually drew lines on the folds just so it's bolder when we're on the camera so you can see. You can do that to yours or you can leave it the way it is. I just wanted my friends at home to be able to clearly see the 10 spaces in my tense frame because I'm going to show you another game you can play at home with your tense frame. Yesterday we played a game where I said you can collect 20 things and you can represent teen numbers on your tens frames and write the numbers you can play with a partner. I said you can use anything. You could use rocks from outside that you collect. You could use cereal, goldfish. I saw, um, I think Miss Turner used Legos um, at home. I saw a lot of great ideas. So today I rated my kitchen for ideas that I could use because my friends, you know, I always use Target dollar, stop, er, dollar Spot erasers, and I have all kinds of fun, cool erasers for the spring. I have flowers and bunnies and butterflies, and but I know not everybody has those at home. So I went into my kitchen and I found, you see what those are? Raisins and hazelnuts. And no one eats them, they've been in the cabinet for a long time. So perfect math manipulative, hazelnuts. Raisins and hazelnuts. So I have uh, more than 10 of each. I wanted to make sure I just had enough to play the game. You only need one tens frame. So what we're going to do in this game is we are going to make combinations that make 10. So to play this game, you are going to set up some equations before you even start. So we know that the equation can go two different directions. Yesterday we were doing the, the we were doing add n plus add n equals sum. Today we're doing sum equals add n plus add n. And remember, add n are those two numbers you're going to put together. 
two numbers that we put together and it's going to give us our sum. So I have to figure out which number plus which number give us 10 total. So that means our tens frame will be full. We talk about a full tens frame. So let me show you a combination that I might make. Hopefully this works. One, two. I'm going to use two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those two are stuck together. Eight. So here I have eight raisins, right? Eight raisins. And I'm going to put one. You should not use items that are round. I think I told you that yesterday. And here I am using items that are round. Two hazelnuts. All right, do you see that? Eight raisins, right? Two hazelnuts. So now, let me put this down for a minute. I'm going to take my equations I set up, and I know that I had 10, right? So how many raisins did I have? Yeah, I had eight, so I'm going to write eight. Make an S, you're not through. All the way back up, there we go. There's my eight. And then how many hazelnuts? I had eight raisins, and then how many hazelnuts made a total of 10, a full 10 spring? Yes, two. Half a heart, he's wearing a shoe. That's how I make a number two. Eight plus two. Now we can read our equation. Remember, reading it's the most important part. Just like when we word build, we need to read our words. In math, we need to read our equation. We have super smart math brains and we need to flex our math muscles. Are you ready? 10 equals eight plus two. Awesome. Now you're gonna come up with as many different combinations as you can. And you're gonna take a picture of it and send it to me and we are going to put it on our Facebook story for everyone to see your super smart brains. I love that so many of my friends are joining with us. Thank you so much. All right, so I had one more thing I wanted to talk about. Yesterday, we started talking about ways we can help at home. And yesterday, we talked about the way to help was to, if you took out a toy or a game and play with it, when you're done, to pick it up and put it away before you play with something else. So that's a great thing that you can do at home. How many of you help cleaning at home? Awesome. So moms and dads out there, I want you to know that my kindergarten, they clean up after themselves. Very rarely do Miss Throckmorton and I do anything to help clean up unless there was like um, a spill of milk or something. We will help them. But they are very efficient and they are very capable of cleaning. Right, boys and girls? See, I'm, I'm letting them know. I'm letting your parents know how good you are at cleaning. So feel free to put them to work. Put on a clean, you guys can pick a new cleanup song. Pick a song that's like three or four minutes and try to finish cleaning whatever you're cleaning before the song's over, right? What a great strategy. All right, so my idea for you today, there's two things that you could do to help clean, but you have to ask your mom and dad or your parents first to make sure it's okay that you do it and that you touch the, the stuff that I'm gonna tell you, you can do, you're capable of doing. Are you ready? The first one is sweeping with a dust pan. All the kids in my class know how to sweep and use a dustpan, and it's good practice. So that's something you could do. Maybe you could sweep the kitchen floor or sweep the front porch. There's different things. Sweep the bathroom floor, okay? You sweep and put it in the dustpan and dump the dustpan into the garbage. Another thing that you could do at home, the second thing that my class is really good at is wiping things down, like cleaning or dusting by wiping things down, surfaces. They love to do it, right? We use an all natural cleaner that they love to wipe things down with. And they're so, they ask me, just so you know, moms and dads, they ask me if they can help me clean. So I hope that you're gonna ask your parents if you can help clean at home. Yes, you, Yago. <laughs> so you're gonna help at home today. And make sure you check in with your parents first, right? And I just want to give another shout out to my friend Christine Conti who joined us yesterday for our live stream. 
every day at 10, she's doing an at-home PE class and she's streaming from Facebook Live, just like we are here. And you can join her at 10 and get a little exercise in before you join back up with me at 1030 for a story and problem solving. I can't wait to see the rest of your solutions. I got so many pictures of kids' solutions to yesterday's story problem, JJ and those pancakes. So I will see everyone later today at 1030. And don't forget your 10 push-up challenge from Miss Rock at Gregory School. I'm on it. I'm going to do it. I'll probably add it to my story or my page, whatever is easiest. I'm going to do those push-ups in between my lessons, all right? I'm taking it on. All right. I love you all. I'll see you later. Mwah. See you in a little while. Have a snack. Get your exercise on. Meet me back here. Bye.